Huh. Huh. Yeah. Let's. Yeah. Living out his dreams. Huh. Yeah. Let's. I mean, it's it's okay. I. Huh. Something's. I don't know. Huh. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. That's something. Something seems to be. Just a little bit better there now. It seems to be the way to go. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. All right, we're back on site here. <clears throat> Bucking's gonna grab some of this nice fur here. It's uh, it's gonna be tough splitting those first few rounds. That was a coarse log. Hi friends, good morning. Um, how's everybody doing? Good. I hope you're doing well. We, uh, as you know, we done this job quite a while ago, friends, and. Uh, I thought to myself, I would go in, those rounds were, not, did you see that? Well, you'll see it. The ax bounces off this stuff. Our fur, friends, people are mistaken with our fur. It, yes, it, once you get up into the log in a straight grain, it splits like nothing. It's beautiful wood to split. But in the first, we call it the buttress of the log, that's where that tree has been holding on to itself for all those years and those windstorms and weather and just everything. That's where it twists. And so it gets really stringy and tough and callous, coarse. Uh, it's always the worst splitting. So I think that's pretty much for every tree. Does that work for you guys in your trees too? The, the last, you know, six, eight feet of log is always the toughest. Anyway, friends, this job we did a long time ago. But I went back and I took care of the hardest rounds, got them out of that fella's face there, and threw it in our shed. So it's just a video of me doing my thing with my axes and my power saws. But there's a couple of good tips in here for you doing uh, the ripping with, with the uh, making noodles. And I just go along the, with the power saw and make things easier on processing this firewood. So I hope you enjoy it. Friends, the Merc is back. I'm excited as heck. More stuff to come. Talk to you on the next video. But enjoy this one. See you on the next one. Friends, check out the setting we're at today. I mean, it's just... I got the power saw because I'm gonna uh, probably end up ripping some of this stuff. This this stuff's really coarse. Like I, I won't, I don't reckon I'll split it, but I shouldn't say that. I do have my big double bit, but it's, it's not gonna, it's not going to be easy, friends. So I, I probably will do some ripping. I don't see any. Yeah, Th this is going to bounce. I can tell by the wood. It's going to bounce. See that, friends? It's just not going to happen. That's why. See this? That's why we do this. That's... It's all you can do. It's that kind of wood, friends. So. I'll probably rip it. Yeah. And this doubles. This is my. It's just too stringy. There's no point.
I was starting to run out of gas, so I pulled it out, tipped it on its side so it would pick up fuel again, let it cool down, and shut it down. Another good reason to shut your power saw off as soon as it starts running out of gas is it's easy to start. Next time you go pull it. I got my back window protected, you see that? I don't need that on no more, do I? And now we're down to the core. Well, would you look at that?
your certain pieces. That's why when I'm doing this stuff, I use different pieces for different stuff, right? Yeah, it's not going anywhere. It's just not. It's on the edge, but it's not going anywhere. You ask, why do I, why do I stack it? Well, I may only stack these two. Because you get way more stacking than you do freaking just throwing it in loose. Plus, I want to protect my window. Right, friends? And plus, guess what? I don't mind it, friends. Now I got just enough to start this row here now. There's a nighttime burner if I ever did see one right there. Okay, that's all you get, friends. Look at this setting. Look at this freaking setting. You know, we kicked all these just by the, just by the building there yesterday, right? Actually, a lot of, most of the wood's up top. Australian axe here too. Now we got these are yeah these are lovely. So this is our our Tazzy and our new Dandy Dong and our axe handle that I broke the other day. And it seems to be splitting very nice actually. Actually better than I thought. Yeah, much better than I thought. You too, take care. Enjoy the weather. See that stringy bark, the odd one left, friends. Whew. See that? Thank you. 
that is so cool. This is neat. Look at, so there was this much sticking out of the tree, okay? Years ago. Look at this. Look at that. <laughs> Isn't that neat? Not really. <laughs> Steel. It's got a really nice profile. Friends, this is the profile. This is it. This axe is crazy. Look at, I want to show you this. Okay. You find something like that, just put it away. Put it away. Build an axe. With a good strong handle, you'll never make another axe. I'm talking wood chopping axe. And also one that can do this, which tells you you need sharpness at the butt. You see that? How you pick up wood like that? I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't have your axe doing that. It's just, you can't do it with a maul. So I don't know. It, it just does not compute with me. So when designing the wood bullet, that was the plan. I gotta swing that dandy down again. It's, a, it's on a white oak handle, friends. It's ridiculous. Like, I mean ridiculous. It's split. It's split. That's crazy. That, that is a beautiful freaking axe. So there we are, friends. I'm just, I got a little teeny spot at the back of the truck for the for the old, you know, wood there. Or the axes and stuff. I got the crew cap. Maybe I'll stick them in there. That's usually what I do. Throw them in the back seat. 
Real good load. Better take some pictures. Look at that sucker. Hmm? Ah, the tires look good. You see what I did today? How I used this as a, uh, you see? I just, I just used this to get higher up. You know what I mean? That's actually, so if you think about it, that's, well, it's up there. It's up to the cab, which is good. Yeah, well, crew cab's doing good. Look at the front end. <laughs> She's up here, friends. <laughs> Look at her. That's what these trucks were built for. They were built for this. And this is just a three quarter ton with an overload package. It doesn't really have huge, mind you, it's got a pretty good set of ribs. It's not like the Merc though. Let me tell you that right now. Actually, there is no overloads in this, in this package. This is a light duty truck compared to the Merc. Friends, I think Myrtle's here. Oh my goodness. I know the sound of my truck. It's Myrtle, here she comes. <laughs> Friends, listen to Myrtle. Oh, she looks solid. Look at her come up that driveway. Oh my goodness, that's a good looking truck. I'll tell you something, this Ryan character, he is, he's a stallion. Look at that thing. I mean, look at her. Look, that's it, three quarter ton truck. No overloads. This is a light duty truck. Friends, it is. It's, it's not heavy duty, don't think it is. I probably should have counted the rounds, but I probably could figure it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. It wasn't too many. It's, a, it's about a 20 foot length of wood. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, friends, it's beautiful here. Look, it's just glorious here. How beautiful this is. This is where I grew up. Frogs are just gone. Okay, let's creep out of here in, in low, low range. He, say, he says the decibels go up big time on these freaking frogs. And I remember they do when I was a kid. They were just a steady. Bah! Anyway, let's pull out. This was a great, great job. Look at the old truck. Hey. There they go. Off for dinner. <laughs> 